yes, yes sir you are i'm joined again so uh, little bit stress because of uh, ashu's statement i'll just be brief so growth hormone stimulation test wishing you a very happy and these are the various tests dr shoham has uh, already alluded to many of these tests uh, so more than 10 nanogram per ml cut off if you are doing a basal sample and by chance if you get more than 10 then there is no need of gst but chances are less than 2 to 3% so need not to try for that so it's always growth hormone stimulation test uh, these tests are carried out in fasting during this test patient should be lying admitted for day care and uh, after the test patient should be observed for next 2 to 3 years with certain drawbacks of all these tests these are pharmacological tests not physiological tests there is a lack of normative data cut off is arbitrary priming with sex steroid is required reproducibility is again uh, poor uh, with a large coefficient of variation this is the by far uh, our best and most widely used uh, test clonidine stimulation test very useful convenient most commonly used cost effective and samples are collected at 0 30 60 90 120 and 150 minutes and dose is uh, again more or less uh, 0.150 microgram per meter square body surface area with little bit side effect of nausea and hypotension and it's uh, most widely used and most of the places use this test as the first test for growth hormone stimulation test followed by glucagon which is the second most uh, commonest uh, commonly used test which stimulate ghrh release uh, causing secretion um, increase secretion of growth hormone there are two approaches fixed dose based or uh, weight based dose weight is 30 microgram per kg body weight and sample collection is uh, not 30 0 60 90 120 and 150 with side effect of nausea and vomiting and late onset hypoglycemia so these are the two tests which are most widely used test we have insulin tolerance test we have just discussed so one go only to show that major advantage of cortisol deficiency which can be identified uh, at the same time also but uh, not only itt even glucagon uh, can also diagnose uh, accurately diagnose hypocortisolism uh, during the test so this is not only features limited to the uh, itt but over the years itt use is declining and uh, one thing which i so home has not highlighted that there are reported deaths during itt not only from uh, outside india but uh, has occurred in Uh, india also and occurred in teaching institute one death has occurred at sgpgi one has occurred at uh, our institute also so a little bit risky we have to be very careful and our experience is almost nil next is arginine stimulation test another good test but uh, not available in india so not go into much detail similarly ghrh one of the best test because it directly stimulates the gh release but again not available in india exercise test although there but very poorly studied so not uh, a lot of people do not use this test or not more a uh, pharmacological test similarly ldopa stimulation test again not uh, widely available test and then we have other test which are not well studied like combined arginine or ghrh test ghrh pyridostigmine test or mesimorelin test which is developing nowadays uh, Uh, but still not in uh, wide use and it's uh, not available uh, in our country so there are various issues some of these issues are highlighted by dr soham again we'll touch up briefly about these issues diagnostic cut off 7 versus 10 mngl do we need one or two tests sex steroid priming is required or not or effect of obesity or how many number of samples we can collect these uh, yes so initial cut off as dr soham has said is 2.5 increased to 3 then 5 and 7 and all these cut offs are based on the study which were carried out in 90 essays of gh not today's essay which are uh, pretty sensitive but uniformly accepted cut off is 10 nanogram per ml which is more or less arbitrary which is not well exemplified but not supported well by literature if we say less than 5 yes there is no issue well supported by the literature if it's between 5 and 7 yes there are some prospective retrospective uh, support that but main contention is between 7 to 10 so this is one of the study published uh, in uh, jcm where they have, they have carried out these stimulation tests in 74 patients with organic uh, ghd and compared with the 298 uh, subjects you can see that uh, 6.5 cut off uh, best cut off on roc with the 
arginine 5.1 with ITT 6.8 with the clonidine. And if you see the sensitivity and specificity, they are pretty high with these cutoffs, but uh, not with that. Uh, there's another publication in 1996. This is the one of the leading publication which has been quoted in uh, most of the study, including uh, our Williams also. So if you see the sensitivity between uh, less than seven nanogram per ml, specificity is uh, pretty high. But when it goes to between seven and 10, there is a huge increase in loss of specificity. So more and more subjects are falsely diagnosed as growth hormone deficiency uh, than uh, less than seven nanogram per ml. So if a peak comes between seven to 10, we have to be extra cautious. If we have used clonidine, then there is absolutely need to go for second test and more potent uh, stimulator like uh, we can go for uh, glucagon. And if between two, seven to 10, then we can take help of uh, other parameters like documented abnormal growth velocity, low IGF, gap between bone age and uh, chronological age. But unfortunately, if we have done two tests and both of these two tests are less than between between seven to 10, then uh, debatable issue whether to offer uh, growth hormone therapy or not. My uh, experience is if we have done two tests, both of uh, between seven to 10, then we need to offer. Now we cannot uh, talk of uh, data. The next issue is one versus two test. Can we do it when one? So if you see the definition of diagnostic test, they should have a minimum sensitivity specificity of 80%, only they are acceptable as a good test performance. And if we see the sensitivity of a specificity of individual test, Individual test is between 60 to 80 percent, and uh, if we increase uh, cutoff, then specificity goes down. So another coming back to that same study, if we see in this study, if we combine two tests, this is study coming from uh, 472 normally growing children with normal growth velocity, with normal IGF-1 level, and if uh, we combine two tests, then specificity increases to approximately 90%. And this is the rationale why we go for two tests. We do not uh, base our therapy on one test because simply it's a costly therapy and the specificity increases with adoption of uh, two tests. So two tests are required for confirmation uh, because of the poor specificity of these tests. However, we can do one test only if uh, there are required causes of growth hormone deficiency like uh, post craniopharyngioma surgery or pituitary adenoma surgery or patient has undergone radiotherapy, chemotherapy, or if there is a hyperpituitarism with evidence or two, three more access has been lost from the pituitary. In that case, yes, we can go with limit to one test. Otherwise, we need to go for two tests. The next uh, contentious issue with growth hormone stimulation test is effect of obesity in cutoff. Uh, this has been well exemplified in various studies that uh, BMI is inversely correlated to the peak of uh, growth hormone stimulation test. This uh, one study published in JCM, you can see that as the BMI SDS increases, the peak of growth hormone comes down. This is occurring in prepubertal as well as pubertal children. So BMI is again important. And if you see the univer univariate analysis between peak GH and BMI, the only significant factor was BMI. So BMI is important while interpreting uh, growth hormone stimulation test. It's inversely related to that and causes more false positive and especially becomes more important if uh, our values are between seven to 10 uh, nanogram per ml if check for BMI, if BMI is more than one SDS, then we have to be again more cautious. We have to take support from other soft uh, information uh, and go for uh, two tests, especially glucagon test, uh, or uh, if uh, somebody is doing ITT can plan for that to get some more information to diagnose growth hormone deficiency. Then other is sex steroid priming. Is it necessary? This is debatable issue from the years together. Previous William mentioned, then it was removed, then it has again come. Uh, the uh, basis for that is uh, uh, performing growth hormone stimulation test in sex steroid rich atmosphere gives a higher peak. This has been shown that diagnostic accuracy of test improves from 73 to 87% in growth hormone deficient if they are primed with that. But one of the major uh, publication which still uh, do not support is this is 1996 publication where 472 uh, normally growing children were studied and there was absolutely no difference in 
uh, white area is prepubertal and the shaded area is uh, pubertal children. If you perform all these stimulation tests, there's hardly any difference in all these tests, even with they were, uh, they were primed with uh, pyridostigmine. Only arginine showed little bit higher peak in pubertal children versus pre uh, pre-pubertal children. Otherwise, most of the tests do not show any difference whether you do it in one or not. So uh, as Dr. Uh, Soham has already gone into detail, I'm not going, but at present, it's not clear black and white. It's a gray area. If you want to perform, especially between 10 to 12 years or 9 to 12 years, yes, you can go for uh, sex steroid priming and uh, otherwise you can perform without that. It's not against any principle. Then an, another issue is how many number of samples uh, collected can be managed with less samples. If you see this uh, in the study, all of these uh, hormones, they have their peak time. The peak time does not mean that every time peak will occur at this time. So if we are doing uh, like uh, clonidine, we collect only 60 minutes or 90 minutes. Can we go away with that? We need not to carry this impression because peak can occur at any point of time. So we have just compiled uh, our uh, data only. So till now we have done around uh, 770 growth hormone stimulation tests of which 75% uh, were having growth hormone deficiency. And here we have, uh, when we have seen peak, so even we have seen peak at zero minute, 30 minute, but yes, with clonidine, we have seen peak at 60 minute with the glucagon, we have seen peak at uh, 120 minute. This is the major area, major time period where we have seen peak, but this does not mean that we cannot see peak at 30 minute or we cannot see peak at zero minute. There is a clear concept. So collection of five to six samples, although they are inconvenient, time consuming, costly, great concern for parents, but it's not advisable to collect less sample. We can have peak uh, at any point of time, simply because of phenomena is there is resistance of somatotropes once they are stimulated. So it may be possible that when, whenever we have started test, patient had a peak and during next uh, some time, patient may not be responding to that stimuli and may respond later on. So in research setting, minus 30 sample is also advisable, but not for uh, service sector. So five or six sample is very much required. So we have other tests like Pegvisomen prime test, dexamethasone stimulation test, oral uh, glucose stimulated, mesimorelin test, but these are not uh, studies and not in very much in use. So again, diagnostic accuracy improves if we combine the two tests. So it's always advisable to do two tests. Use of IGF-1 and igf bp 3 is still very much limited uh, in the diagnosis of the growth hormone deficiency because lack of normative data. There are many other factors which can affect the GH and igf uh, bp 3 levels. So when last what's our practice? So we do GHST as a routine OPD procedure, growth hormone stimulation test, clonidine followed by glucagon. Uh, unfortunately, we haven't, fortunately or unfortunately, we haven't done any ITT in last 15 years because of our one bad experience and none of our resident has been trained to uh, do ITT. So more or less this ITT is going down. In subjects with pituitary lesion or radiotherapy, chemotherapy, we do one test only. And for all practical purpose, uh, what we have adopted on the practice is if values are less than five nanogram per ml, we take help of uh, other soft parameters and then uh, we go for therapy only. And But any value more than five, we go for second stimulation test. So just to summarize, despite many issues, GHST remains the main test for GH reserve. Two tests are required. Obesity again uh, causes false positive. Sex priming steroid can be done, but again, not uh, compulsory. And five to six samples are required to uh, get the best result. IGF-1 uh, and IGF-BP3 is still supportive of diagnostic, but not diagnostic. Their use is more in treatment of growth hormone deficiency than the diagnosis. So thank you.